got another question for the paper three questions playlist. So this one focuses on the preparation of a standard solution, an acid-based titration calculation, and cis-trans isomerism. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is describe how the student is going to prepare this standard solution of barium hydroxide. Obviously, we need to calculate the mass of barium hydroxide needed, so we'll deal with that first. So first thing we'll do is work out the moles of barium hydroxide. So we know it's got to have this concentration and this volume. So the moles is concentration times volume. Remember that volume's got to be in decimeters cubed. So we need that many moles of barium hydroxide. So we're now just going to convert that to grams, which we do by multiplying the moles by the MR of barium hydroxide. So we're going to need 6.42 grams. So we'll move on to the preparation of the standard solution now. So obviously the first thing we need to do is weigh out that many grams, or 6.42 grams of the barium hydroxide, using a two decimal place balance. We then dissolve that in a small volume of distilled water. That then needs transferring to a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask. We then need to rinse the beaker that would dissolve the barium hydroxide in and add the washings to the flask, the volumetric flask, obviously. We then need to make the solution up to the graduation mark, but we're going to include this extra detail here. We're going to use a dropping pipette so that the base of the meniscus is sitting on the mark. And then the final thing we need to do is stop her and invert several times to mix it all together. So moving on to the calculation now, I've got my usual diagram to sort of bring it all to life. Notice I've highlighted the 100 cm cubed information. Normally, when you do questions like this, if you've done a few already, you'll be, you'll be used to using a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask, which is what was referenced in part A, and they've switched it to 100 cm cubed, so I imagine that might catch people out. So, the students prepared a 100 cm cubed solution of acid D. We know that there's 3.215 grams gone into there. They've taken 25 cm cubed out, so obviously that's what that is there. Done a titration, using barium hydroxide with that concentration, and the mean titrate is coming out at 23.5 cm cubed. We're also told the mole ratio in the reaction. One mole of barium hydroxide reacts with two moles of D. So the first thing we need to do is work out how many moles of barium hydroxide have been involved. So that's just concentration times that volume, but the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed. So that's coming out at 3.525 times 10 to the minus 3. The moles of D that must be in this 25 cm cubed used in the titration is going to be double that because of the ratio which comes out at 7.05 times 10 to the minus 3. The moles of D in the 100 cm cubed flask is going to be four times that, because obviously 25 is a quarter of 100, which means that there's 0.0282 moles of D in the solution. We know how many grams were involved. We know the moles. We can work out the MR of D from that. So the MR of D comes out at 114. We were told at the top of the question that this is the general formula for D. So if the COH part has a mass of 45, the whole thing, 114, the difference is obviously this bit here, which comes out at 69. So the formula for the acid must be C5H9COOH. So before we move on to the two possible structures for these cis stereoisomers of D, we'll just remind ourselves what cis isomerism is. So it's, cis isomerism is a form of EZ isomerism. So you've got to have different groups on each carbon of the double bond. And then for cis trans to be possible, you've got to have, you compare in the relative positions of the same groups or atoms. So cis is when the same groups or atoms are on the same side of the CC double bond. So you can see these X's here are both pointing down. So this is in the cis configuration. If that X was up here, that would be the trans configuration. Now, a common um, comment I get on uh, the cis trans, anything mentioned in cis trans, some students seem to think that it has to be a hydrogen um, where you compare across the double bond. It does not. So it's not restricted to hydrogen cis-trans. 
as long as the group's the same, there could be two chlorines, two hydroxyl groups, they've just got to be the same. So with that in mind, let's start with an example where they're not hydrogens. So we've got two methyl groups. So this is cis because they are the same as each other and they're both pointing down. So that means we've got to have a hydrogen up here and a CH2COOH group here. Here's another one. So now the identical groups are hydrogens. We've got an ethyl group here and a CH2COOH here. Here's another couple, so the only difference between them is this group here. So you can see this is a straight chain, whereas this one's branched. And here's another two here, so again cis, because we've got the hydrogens, the same group, pointing down. The difference now is on the left-hand carbon, so you've got this straight chain propyl group here, whereas we've got this two propyl group here.